Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Blip2 model, which is basically bootstrapping language image pre-training with frozen image encoders and large language models, right? So it's essentially the V2 version of the Blip model, which I talked about in a recently recorded video. Let's get started. So what can this Blip2 model do, right? Well, this Blip2 model uh, essentially can do a whole bunch of visual uh, vi you know, image and language tasks. So these are examples from instructed zero shot image to text generation capabilities of Blip2 model. So let's look at some of these in detail. So, you know, given this image, explain the advantages of this product. And uh, well, Blip2 model can actually come up with a reasonably good description of what the car is capable of. Tell me something about the history of this place, and it can actually tell you uh, really good details. Write down the facts that you know about this flower, so it can actually explain to you details about the flower. So that's not just about uh, uh, you know uh, being able to tell you visual knowledge reasoning, but it can also do conversationals, a uh, visual conversation. So basically, given this image, it can actually understand what is unusual about the image, or how could someone get out of the house, you know, uh, using a slide on the side of the house. Okay. So uh, it can also do visual common sense reasoning. So for example, what are the ingredients I need to make this? Uh, you know, it can basically figure out what all is written on that one. Uh, it can also tell you, you know, what does the man feel and why? So it's like common sense that what man is feeling about you know, given this particular image. Yeah. It can do storytelling. It can also do personalized image to text generation. So, so for example, uh, you know, it can tell you these things. So given this image and you give them some names, the characters in this image, it can actually generate a reasonable description about the image in a personalized manner, right? So it can generate conversations as if you know people are acting as a cat or a dog. So personalized from perspective of the persona, you know, whether it is a cat or a dog and so on. Okay. So interesting task that one can do given an image and uh, and and text around it. Right. So all of these are now possible with high quality thanks to the Blip2 model. Okay. So now of course the next obvious question is how is this model pre-trained, right? So the Blip2 model is actually pre-trained in two stages. So the first, you know, these two stages are actually indicated here. Okay. So the first stage basically aims to create vision language representation learning. So essentially the first stage just focuses on vision language representation learning. The second stage really focuses on generation aspect. So if you look at the first stage, which is highlighted in this uh, left uh, dotted box, what you see is that they try to uh, come up with this new thing called as Qformer, also called as querying tra transformer. Uh, and using this querying transformer, they are able to obtain a very awesome vision language, uh, you know, vision language representations. Okay. These representations are then combined with large language models so as to be able to generate awesome outputs like the ones I showed to you in the in the in the previous part of this video. Okay. Now, uh, so since there are two parts to this model, therefore they pretend also in two stages. So the first stage basically does the first part, learns good vision language representations. The second stage learns how to generate or how to do decoding, right? So that's that. So for the first stage, basically, as you see, there is a Qformer box out there, and the details of the Qformer are shown in the bottom part of this slide. So Qformer, as you see, basically, uh, you know, so the first step that they do is to take the input image, pass it through a standard image encoder, which is frozen. So we'll talk about more details of this image encoder later, but this is a pretty standard, you know, transformer based image encoder, which is kept frozen. Okay. And then these image encodings obtained from this frozen image encoder go to this Qformer. Now the goal for this Qformer guy is to basically look at the text uh, captions also and be able to come up with uh, uh, with a text influenced image representation, right? So essentially you don't want to just come up with random image representations, but come up with a combined multimodal or a vision language combined, uh, you know, a multimodal representation. Okay. Therefore, Qformer actually has two parts to it. One is the image transformer part and the other is the text transformer part. So as you see, uh, there are n different layers in this transformer and n layers in this transformer. So, uh, um, you know, of course, the text part of the transformer takes the text input. So it could be a question, it could be, uh, you know, um, or, or it could be any caption associated with this image. So this is a, a image about a cat wearing sunglasses and that's the caption that goes there. Okay. Now the image encoder, image uh, uh, transformer part basically takes learned queries as input, right? So essentially, uh, you know, while the text transformer, uh, the number of input tokens depends on the size of the caption. 
in the image transformer, the number of input tokens is fixed. In fact, they experiment with 32 tokens in their paper, right? And the size of each of those tokens also fix the representation for each of those tokens. Now these are learnable embeddings. So essentially they just, uh, you know, fix uh, 32 different vectors. Uh, they, they are randomly initialized, but learned over time, learned over time, right? These are global vectors, basically, which are updated via backpropagation across several samples in the pre-training data. Okay. Now these are fed to a, a, a transformer layer uh, or other transformer uh, uh, architecture, and this transformer encoder basically has uh, self-attention, cross-attention, and feed-forward sublayers. Now notice that this cross-attention sublayer is not available, is not present in every block, but in every other block, in every alternate block. Basically, they bring in this cross attention. Otherwise, they basically just have self attention and feed forward. Okay, so that's that. Now, on the on the text side, basically, it's a pretty standard text, uh, you know, transfer encoder, self attention and feed forward. Now, of course, on the image side, when they have cross attention, the cross attention, uh, you know, you know, the part, the cross attention part comes from the image encodings. So while they're trying to transform these learned query representations, um, the cross attention part basically flows in from the image, image uh, encoder output side. Okay. Um, now that we know how this Qformer works, uh, let's basically see how it is pre-trained, right? So the architecture of Qformer I've already talked about. Let's see how it is pre-trained. So this Qformer guy is actually pre-trained using three different tasks, as you see them here. Image text matching, image text contrastive learning, and image grounded text generation. These tasks, by the way, are the same as the blip, as, as the tasks which are used to pre-train the blip model. Okay. So uh, the idea is that uh, these. Uh, so so let's talk about uh, uh, these tasks one by one. So for example, let me first talk about image text contrastive learning. The task is very simple. Given a positive image text pair, meaning a caption which associates with an image, you actually sample several negative texts. So basically, you say that there are some random captions that don't go with the image. So uh, and what you want to do is to make the model learn that this uh, image text positive pair must have higher similarity compared to the image combined with negative text pairs. Right? And you do, by the way, the other way around as well. So for every text caption, you also sample random negative images. right? And therefore, what you also want to do is to ensure that the positive image text pair has a higher similarity compared to the text and negative image pairs. Okay. So that's what you want to do. And uh, therefore, the way this is done is basically you independently feed these learned queries and do cross attention and so on and come up with some image representations. Similarly, you independently feed this text input and you basically come up with text representation, specifically the CLS token here, right? And you compute the similarity between, um, you know, uh, each of those 32 image tokens and the CLS token here. Of course, you take the maximum similarity and you want to ensure that the maximum similarity between any of the image tokens and this text token for the positive pair is larger compared to the negative image text pairs, either the image and negative text pairs or text and the negative image pairs. OK, so that's that. Now, in, in this particular case, the two transformers, the image transformer and the text transformer work independently. They do not have any connections at the self attention layer. That's sort of obvious, but uh, you know, it will become clearer what I mean by these connections at the self attention layer. OK, uh, uh, when I when I talk about it for the other two pre training losses, OK, the other pre training loss, which is simple to understand is image text matching. So, you know, this part, this kind of pre training loss is also very simple to understand. Given an image and a text, you want to do binary classification, whether it is a positive pair or a negative pair. So basically meaning whether the text matches with the image or not, that's it. Now to be able to do this, what you want to do is to ensure that the representations that are learned for the image and for the text are basically co-attended with each other. Okay. So therefore the self-attention layer, you can think about the self-attention layer as expanded across both the transformers. Of course, the feed forward layers in both the transformers keep working independently. They are, they don't, they are not really connected with each other. The self-attention layers basically uh, are, are such that uh, you know, the text tokens can actually look at the image tokens in the previous layer of the transformer and the image tokens can look at the previous text token. So everybody can, every token can actually look at every other token, whether it is an image token or a text token. Okay. So that's basically called as bidirectional attention masking, you know, uh, as against unimodal attention masking. So in the unimodal attention masking in image text contrastive learning, you know, the two transformers, the self attentions basically acted independently. They were not connected to each other at all, right? But uh, for the bidirectional self attention masking for image text matching, the two, um, you know, the two um, uh, modality uh, or the two transformers basically have the self attention layers as if they are all connected with each other. Okay, so that's that.
Uh, uh, the third kind of uh, uh, pre-training loss that they work with is uh, essentially the uh, the image uh, the the image grounded text generation. Okay. So in this case, basically this uh, text uh, uh, in the text transformer part basically acts as a decoder. Okay. Now in this particular case, the way this works is that uh, you know uh, you want to basically take the image and you want to start decoding. You want to basically generate the caption, right? Of course, you also provide as input the shifted uh, caption in that senses. Okay. Now here, the way this uh, masking works in the self-attention layer is like UniLM style. So it's basically uh, so you know if you basically have read the UniLM paper, uh, you would realize that the way the attention works is as follows. If you look at the image token, of course, it can basically, uh, you know, uh, have attention over all the other image tokens in a self attention layer. But if you look at the text token, the text token can have uh, attention over all the previous text tokens and also over all the image tokens, all the image tokens. OK, uh, of course, it cannot really have uh, attention over the future tokens because future tokens have not been generated on the text side. OK. So that's not allowed, but a text token can actually have attention over all the previous text tokens and also all the image tokens, right? So that's basically how uh, you know the 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 uh, image grounded text generation uh, loss works. Of course, in the image grounded text generation case, it's a cross entropy loss. In the image uh, text matching case, it's the binary cross entropy loss. And in the case of image text contrastive learning, it's the contrastive loss, which is basically optimized for. So that's how the first uh, uh, stage, the first stage of uh, the blip two model pre training happens. Okay. Now, how does the second stage happen? Second stage is actually very, very simple. So you already have the image encoder. You have the images of the image encoder. You take the image, uh, you know, the image transformer part of the Q former. Notice that this this part is basically discarded. OK, you take the uh, learned queries. So the, the image transformer part of the of the Q former guy, and then you have a fully connected layer through which you give uh, the the transform representations that you obtain here through a fully connected layer. Uh, as input to a LLM decoder. OK, so this LLM decoder guy is by the way frozen as well in the second stage of pre-training. OK, so the idea is that you want to have this blip to model now go beyond the vision language understanding capabilities to vision language based uh, language generation capabilities. Right. So therefore they do the second kind of pre-training in two ways. Either they do it with just an LLM decoder or with an LLM based encoder decoder network. OK. So the idea is that you take uh, in both the cases, what do you do? You basically take the model which is uh, trained by the first stage of pre-training, right? And you take uh, for the for the Q former guy, you basically take just the image transformer part and you connect it to a fully connected layer, whether it is like LLM decoder later or LLM encoder decoder network. And then you consume the output generated by the fully connected layer as as uh, as as prepended inputs to the LLM encoder part in the LLM encoder decoder network, or just to the LLM decoder in the in the LLM decoder network. Right. Bo note that in both the cases, these LLM encoder decoder are sort of uh, froze. Okay. Now, uh, for both the stages of the pre-training, they basically use the same data sets as BLIP. So uh, they basically uh, used 129 million images from MS from from the Coco data set, Visual Genome data set. Conceptual captions 3 million and conceptual captions 12 million and SBU captions data sets. Right? They also consumed 115 million images from the Lion 400 million data set. Uh, just like the blip model, they took the learnings from the blip model and they used the captioning and filtering method to create synthetic captions as well as filter out the noisy captions from the web images. Okay. Um, so for the for from the architecture perspective for the image encoder. Uh, you know this this image encoder guy. Well, they basically use the VIT vision transformers. Uh, you know from the clip and Eva clip models respectively. Right? They experiment with both of them. For the uh, frozen uh, language model, they basically use OPT for 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 the language for the LLM decoder thing, and they basically use the Flan T5 model for uh, the LLM encoder decoder uh, kind of uh, experiments. Okay. So now let's talk about how does BLIP2 perform quantitatively, right? So basically they experimented with several different tasks. I'll talk about a few tasks on this slide. So um, they first did a zero shot evaluation. So zero shot evaluation means they did not fine tune their model. They did two stage pre-training. And remember, by the way, uh, the first stage, the initialization was actually done using BLIP model. So therefore, you know, they have already done uh, or rather the pre-training data was created using that uh, bootstrapping kind of thing. So. The first stage actually already has the two stages in blip itself, and then there is a second stage of pre-training that is done uh, as part of blip two uh, in that sense. Okay, 
So, uh, but there's no fine tuning which is done as you see in this table. Okay, and then they experimented with uh, uh, three different tasks: visual question answering, image captioning, image text retrieval on these three different data sets: VQA, V2, no caps, and Flickr data set. So, of course, uh, you know, visual question answering uh, uh, basically they report the VQA accuracy. For image captioning, it's a generative task. They report the CIDR and the SPICE matrix. Uh, image text retrieval, they basically do both text retrieval and image retrieval, and they basically um, report recall at one matrix. Right? So now if you compare with these models, well, they compare with four different baseline models uh, of different sizes uh, and, and basically uh, you know, how many trainable parameters that they have. Uh, they also compare their blip2 model, right? Uh, and uh, essentially, if you look at uh, uh, you know uh, the overall accuracy, you basically see the blip mod blip two model is way better compared to the blip model. Now, uh, the way they experimented with the, the zero shot framework is basically by doing instruction based uh, uh, you know instruction based uh, prompting. So they the in case of the LM decoder model, they prompted using this kind of a thing question and then give the question and then answer colon. In case of the LLM encoder decoder kind of framework, they prompted with question colon and then short answer you know, colon, right? So that's that. Now, what the, what is what can be observed is that Blip2 actually gives you better results compared to even Flamingo 80 billion model. So the 80 billion parameter model. So this is actually not trainable. And so uh, yeah, maybe it's trainable parameters. So that's okay. So but then you have like 80 billion parameters in this Flamingo overall 80 billion parameters in the model. Uh, and then, but still the accuracy is better with Blip2 uh, by 8.7%, right? 8.7%, despite having 54x. So this is basically 54, uh, you know, uh, the, the number of parameters are 54x uh, lesser in the Blip2 model uh, compared to the 80 billion parameter that you see there. Uh, and still, basically, it gives you way better results, 8.7% uh, improvement, right? So needless to mention that if you do a fine tuning as well, uh, the blip2 models actually lead to state of the art results in, uh, in, in on various tasks. So these are basically results on image captioning tasks and these are results on the VQA task. So as you see, uh, these are results on the image captioning reported on the no caps and Cocoa data set uh, uh, results in terms of CIDR and SPICE matrix. And they have done comparisons with respect to several other models. And what you see is that, uh, uh, you know, blip to uh, flan T5 encoder decoder Excel sized model with VITG basically gives you uh, the best results overall, the state of the art results basically on this data set. Uh, they also experimented with the uh, question answering. Now, question answering, remember, is basically. Um, uh, you know, is, is a task where you have uh, an image and question as the input. So since the question is the input, uh, they find you under the Q former guy uh, with, uh, you know, along with the text transformer. So what they did was to basically take the queries and, uh, uh, you know, uh, learnable queries and pass them to the image transformer, give the question to the text transformer part of Q former. And then, of course, they um, essentially uh, so so that's that's what they did. And then they essentially took the queries part from the query transform from from the image transformer uh, and connected with the fully connected layer, give it as input along with the question to the LLM, uh, which basically tries to guess uh, the answer, tries to come up with the answer. Okay. Right? So in this particular case, again, on the open ended generation kind of task, they observe that they get the best results. Uh, now uh, on the on the closed set, uh, just a you know, selection of the answer task, they did not get the best results and I'm not shown on the slide, but result, more results are in the paper, but at least in the open ended task, they actually essentially generative task, they essentially establish state of thought. OK. Uh, Blip2 is not always great. It can actually, uh, you know, lead to hallucinations and incorrect outputs. So, for example, given this image of Albert Einstein, write a famous quote said by this person, and it comes up with this quote, but that's inaccurate. So, the quote is actually from a different person. This just showcases that the large language model that is used in Blip2 can actually come up with inaccurate knowledge. Right. Similarly, if you look at this uh, dress, uh, you know, can I wear this for my trip to Canada in December? It sort of says it's a nice, uh, you know, it says first yes. It's a nice short, short and shorts, but uh, it's a little casual for the trip to Canada. Now, ideally, it should have talked about, uh, uh, you know, weather in Canada, and therefore shorts are not that great in the cold weather in Canada. So therefore, you know, it came up with the incorrect reasoning path leading to incorrect result, incorrect answer about, uh, you know, about the question. Again, this is an incorrect answer here, uh, you know, uh, please write the specifics of this product. This product is basically iPhone 14, but it basically says iPhone 11 and so on, just because of, uh, uh, of, of stale information that is present in the LLM, which was used by the Blip2 model. Okay? 
So in summary, in this video, I talked about Blip2. It's a generic and compute efficient model for vision language pre-training that leverages frozen pre-trained image encoders and LLMs. Remember, in either of the two pre-training tasks, the LLMs were kept frozen with mean, both of those tasks, right? Uh, whether it is the image LLM or the or the image encoder or the large language model which was used for decoding, right? Uh, it basically established a state of the art on various vision language tasks uh, with a, uh, while, while having a very small amount of trainable parameters during pre-training. 54x less parameters compared, uh, you know, compared to the large Flamingo 80 billion model. Right? It also shows emerging capabilities in zero-shot instructed uh, image to text generation, as we saw in, uh, in, in, in the previous part of the video. Uh, and if you want to experiment with the uh, uh, models, uh, also if you want to just try out Jupyter notebooks, they are all available there. Okay. Hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.